Hello YouTube, my name is Sean Connors and welcome back to my channel. This is my new RPG format show that I'm going to be introducing from this point on and it's an amalgamation of all the things that you've enjoyed about my channel up to this point. This show should last approximately 25 minutes. That's the aim and that's the idea that I have. And as I say, it will bring all the best bits of everything that I've done over the last year to what I hope is a good show format. Uh, of course, I will review it, update it and change it as you guys say are necessary. I'm still using the same recording equipment I did before, so crank up the volume. I'm afraid I only have an iPhone at this stage. I still have no intention to upgrade it any further at this point or use more advanced video techniques. That's not to say that I don't want to. It's just to say at this stage still, I don't feel it's necessary. Um, I'm sure in due course and over a period of the next year, I probably will. And I am looking for people to get involved who want to do an intro to my show and some sort of music to it. I'd love all that. It'd be great to have. So if you've got any ideas and willing to share them, brilliant. Get in touch with me. And it'd be great to have your thoughts and your impact. Now, on a more personal level, um, I've been involved in a number of RPG products. But the one that's come to fruition most recently is League of Fanatica 8, uh, where I was lead developer. Um, if you haven't already checked it out, um, look at uh, www.liberfanatica.net. Um, the URL for that will be at the bottom of this show, along with many others, and it will be a great opportunity to have a look at it. I've also been in involved in a Reckless, uh, Reckless Crew podcast, um, I hope I've got that right, and I'll put the URL at the bottom of this, where I was interviewed by Lister Crow, the Strowman Bones, um, brilliantly, I must say, in a 20-minute uh, podcast that really talks about in-depth around that product and stuff like that. So if you're interested in learning more about what we've been up to, it's a great place to go and have a look. So, my show tonight, let's talk about some RPG news straight away. Now, there are two things that struck my attention. I'm talking UK-based here to start with. However, one of these bits of information you guys in America already know about, but over here in the UK, it's only just been released. And the other thing is useful for all of us. And I'm only picking a couple of bits out because those are my main focuses, the things that really caught my attention for this particular week. And I'm talking here 14th of August onwards. Those things that have just hit the news that I like the look of, that need to be mentioned, and I'll do that on a weekly basis. There are two things. I'm just going to quick take a swig of tea. Sorry it's not anything stronger. It probably will be by the end of the show. However, um, the first one is The Lamentations of the Silver Prin the Flame Princess. Now, Alakoff and Samwise have done a fantastic video on this product already. And because of their videos, obviously, as soon as it came live out here in the UK, I've, got, I've basically got myself a copy. It won't probably arrive till maybe Wednesday, Thursday of this week. I won't be reviewing this product. Those guys have already done a good job and th I'm hoping what they'll do is attach their videos to this video and you guys can take a look at it. This is one of the many ways that we can bring the community closer because of all the great work that you guys have done. So please check that out. I'm sure it'll take a couple of days for it to go up, but anyway, you'll find their channels on my main page and you'll find their channel. I'll put a little, little um, location for them at the bottom again of this particular video. So. Check it out, great videos. Um, the other product is more useful for all of us. I've noticed that Fantasy Flight Games for some time, I've been keeping an eye on it actually, um, and we're talking about bringing out Blood Bowl, the card game. Now, I'm fascinated, I love Blood Bowl. I, I loved it for two reasons. First of all, it's fantasy creatures in a, a, an American football style arena. Win win. I love American football, love fan role play, fantasy stuff, fantastic. So, obviously, you know, when Blood Bowl came out, I bought it. However, uh, I haven't played Blood Bowl for many a year now, but I saw the card game advertised at the beginning of 2010. There was lots of hints in Fantasy Flight to do it, and then recently it's just gone dead. There's been nothing. However, just last week they announced that they're going to do it. It's going live at the end of this year. Jay Little, the guy that designed Warhammer 3rd uh, Edition, is that's one of the things he's attached to. He's got a promotion, and it's one of the things he's working on. I can't wait to see what they do with it. I hope it's going to have... A bit like Magic the Gathering, I hope it's going to have packs of cards and special creatures and all sorts. I'm really looking forward to that. And, um, well, as soon as we can get our hands on a copy, I promise to review it. I'm really looking forward to it. So I just thought I'd throw that out there to start off tonight's show. Now, this takes me neatly into the next segment of my show. And as I do this, I'm going to occasionally glance down because I'm just going to check to make sure that we have plenty of time. One of the biggest problems you have when you're uploading videos on YouTube is that although I have a fairly nice amount of uh, room that I can operate in, it takes such a damn long time because of the internet connection I have to get those videos up and I want to make sure that I don't overrun by too much. So that's why the reason I may have to keep peeking down. However, 
two tips this week, DMing tips, and I'm going to have to use this prop as a, a way of illustrating them. This is the first one. Now, as soon as I put this on, other than the fact that I don't look particularly cool, um, I'm probably as cool as water, but um, what it does is it immediately changes the sort of person I am. You get a, a, a hidden facade. There's something not you can't tell about me. Now, when you're DMing, and I'll take them off because I look bloody ridiculous with them on, um, when you... When you're DMing, it, many of the tips we've given are really, I think, skirted around the issue of what I've been trying to get at, I think, through my videos. They're all relative, you know, all important, tonality, voice, mannerisms, they're all correct. But the biggest one that many DMs don't realise is the eyes. The eyes are the, your, they're your, they're the key to your role-playing soul. Your players will... If you're, if you're in the right zone, you're up for the game, you know what you want to run, you're confident around your material, it all stems through your eyes. The body language is encourages that, but it all comes through your eyes. And it's, it's that engagement that you have with the players that is the difference maker. Because when you're not quite on your game, you do do things that are a little bit different to the way you would normally run a game. You know, you'll look away, you look down, you don't engage the players, you're not actively manoeuvring around. I love to manoeuvre around the table, I love to get up, I love to project my voice I love to do things differently and people know if I'm in the zone it would show through my eyes through my mannerisms and everything else so that's why I wanted to illustrate it that's why poker players wear them because they're not giving anything away it's not the body language that people read it's the eyes and that's the key the real key it's a, uh, I would call it a um, intermediate it's not a beginner's piece of advice that it's an intermediary somewhere in the middle where you've got many of the tips you've taken on board and then you're now fleshing out those finishing touches on those being beginning tips. Now the second tip that I'm going to share with you is a really, really advanced tip and it comes around in an odd way because recently I joined a games club in Warwickshire and I knew when I was going to the club that I was going to step into a room probably with about a dozen people or so, it's going to grow quite quickly, we've got about 20 members now in two weeks, where there were going to be a lot of experienced players. Um, I never realised until I arrived on the set, I promised that I was going to run a session and we, we agreed that it's going to be a five week block of time. I, I won't digress too far, but needless to say, the expectation level around the room was much higher than expected because people had heard about me, they'd seen the channel, they were experienced, there were many good DMs in that room, and you can imagine the pressure that I was under because you think to yourself, Jesus, if I don't run a good session, um, they are going to be very disappointed because you know what it's like if you go to, when you want to watch a film, okay, and your expectation because you've seen the first one, you think, great, I can't wait for the next. And it does not match the expectation level. How deflated you feel. I really was desperately important. It was desperately important to me that those guys did not leave that room feeling deflated. What I'm pleased to say is that I know in myself, my own validation, that I'm happy to say that I, I'm really pleased with the feedback I got and the experience of being able to run a game for experienced DMs um, is immeasurable. And I would certainly use that as a piece of advice. We've used the book technique before, but get involved with running at conventions. Get involved with running a game in your local hometown for a group of people you already know. Maybe you think they're outside your league. They're really experienced. Run a game for them. A couple of weeks lot, three weeks lot, say to them, I want to run a game and I want your feedback because I want to know where I am as a DM. People love to give feedback. Other DMs, real DMs, will always want to be involved in supporting other DMs to encourage them to get better. So look at this as a way to really find out where you are, where you are on that journey of discovery as far as a DM is, where, where you are. And as an experienced DM, it's a fantastic way for you to take on board people's thoughts and feelings. I found it immeasurably useful, but for many different reasons. It validated what I believed. It was great to get the feedback that people felt was unique and a different experience. And it was great to be challenged in so many unique ways. And I'm also looking forward to coming out, stepping away from a game and sitting in one of theirs and see what I can glean from them. And that's another tip for another day. But those are the two tips for this week. Now, let's move on to a random review. Now, we talked about random reviews before. Now, I didn't really get this off the ground, but it obviously would work. And it was something that you guys were quite keen on. I did one random review and unfortunately because of circumstances it was the only one we did. Now we're going to relaunch that in exactly the same way. Now, um, all I know is that, and I've forgotten it because I, I dropped the piece of paper earlier and forgot where I put it down, but one of you guys gave me the next number on the list of random reviews. I'm starting it again today, except I'm going to use this guy's number tonight for the random review, and I'm going to ask you again, pick one box, one or two, box one or two, and a number between one and a hundred. You can have the same number twice because as soon as the product is picked, 
I'm going to take it out and replace it with something else. And it will throw up new products, sometimes old products, very old products, all from different systems, generally around, I'll be honest, generally around fancy-based stuff, because that's my, my speciality, my forte, and I want to run the reviews, as I said, with Vant Review, pick the product up, remember what I can, and run the review straight. Don't look at it and just run it as it is, and what I can remember from it, because that's more important, because I want you guys to see why I score it what I score it, and the passion and belief that I have in it. So, without further ado, what is the random review? This week's random review is the Game of Thrones. And I was so grateful that the person picked that number because this series just came out on TV over here, same time it did over yours. Uh, CBS, I believe, in America, launched the series, 10 part series. I've never read any of their books, I don't read fantasy books because I like to steal well clear of them because I know I would use their ideas and then players would realise what I'm doing and they would have read the books. And I, I, it's just a mess. So for me, it was all new. I'd never seen it. I was, I was fascinated by it. It was a brilliant series, I thought, for TV. Excellent. And it made me want to get this book out again. I was so grateful that the person had picked this in the random review. So I thought, well, let's do this one tonight and then see what you guys pick for the next one. Whoever, in, whoever gives a comment first, that person's name will get mentioned and I will be doing the random review of the product that they've mentioned, that they picked. And I'll also let you know at the beginning of the week what that product is as soon as I get the first review through. Anyway, it's a D20 product. I've got to tell you, it's open gaming license. That's the first thing. It came out in about 2006. It's obviously based on George R.R. R. Martin's work. Um, the plus side is it captures the feeling of his veil very well. It uses unique classes specifically centered around his books, not around the open gaming, not around D20, not around Pathfinder. That needs to be clear. But there are things in here that are very valuable for both systems. This is a very low-key magic system, incredibly low-key. In fact, magic is so rare it's almost not on the radar. Hit points in this game, or vitality, whatever you want to call it, there is not much. So even high-level characters probably don't have more than about 40, 50 hits, max, and I'm talking high level. So you can imagine what it's like. They, they really fear every combat, which is a great thing in my view, and is a really good mechanic that could easily be stolen from here into other people's games. In fact, I'm thinking about doing that. Now, the thing that I love about this book is the artwork. I mean, if I just hold up that to you, and also just pick out at random just a couple of the colour plates that are in the book, um, it just gives you an overview. I mean, they're all stunning, quite frankly, absolutely stunning. I hope you can pick those out. Absolutely stunning. Um, it's a beautifully laid out book. The index as well is probably, I would say, from my memory, the best I've ever seen. Everything that I remember on here really, really works. It's beautifully laid out. They've got lovely ideas about how to implement the different, because obviously the various houses are critically important in this game. And they do a good job of doing that in the framework of the game. The careers are unique and I think on the whole work. How you would bring a party into a world like this is one of the weaknesses of the system. It doesn't quite hold together as well as the premise of the book. So I would say that straight away. I would say that the forward of the book is the thing that memory serves me right. It's blue. Yeah, blue. And what I love about it, I'm going to read it for you because this for me should be in every role playing book ever produced. Right. So listen to this. These rules are written on paper, not etched in stone tablets. Rules are suggested guidelines, not required edicts. If the rules don't say you can't do something, you can. There are no official answers, only official opinions. Guys, my players, remember that. When dice conflict with a story, the story always wins. Min-maxing and munchkinism aren't pl problems with the players. Sorry, with the game, they're problems with the players. The game master has full discretionary power over the game. The game master always works with, not against the players. A game that is not fun is no longer a game, it's a chore. The book contains the answers to all things, and when the above does not apply, make it up. The greatest forward in any book that I've ever read, though I remember it so well and I loved it. Um, overall, this book would score 2.75 out of 4. It's got many pluses, beautiful artwork, great layout, good index, lovely idea and premise, but it fails to deliver them in a format that would really work in a long-term campaign. And obviously as a product, it quickly fell off the shelf, disappeared from sight, and was lost, I suppose, in the great vacuum that was the success of the open gaming licence. Obviously other, product, other products have come out around George R. Martin's work, that RPG-wise, that are excellent, and maybe they'll come out in future reviews. But for today's review, this has been a quick look back on the Game of Thrones, a game that 
I love the premise behind it, love the book. The book is going to be a real, it's a real collector's item. If you do have the book or can get hold of it in any way, shape or form, it's brilliant if you want to strip away your Pathfinder or your, your third edition game and make it a little less magic based and a lot more around atmosphere, story and a lot less about the hit points and vitality of the game. I really do like it for those reasons. But it will only score 2.75, but it is a wonderful, wonderful book. And if you do have it, dig it out again. So that's this week's random review, which takes me nicely in towards a chapter of the book. And I'm going to have to look down for a second, so bear with me, which um, we're going to talk about now, which is um, questions that you guys have uh, thrown out over the last um, few months. And we can finish on that and also talk a little bit around the future of the channel and stuff like that. So let's start probably in that way. Let's start with the future of the channel a little bit and announce something. We've currently got over 600 subscribers. So obviously, I think it's good that, and I've seen this done quite a lot, that a number of people in different formats have competitions on their channels, which I think is a really good idea. And I thought to myself, well, as we're growing the community, and that's part of this, is to try and build a show that encourages and brings in other people's thoughts and ideas. But I need to do something very, very, very special for my audience and for the people that contribute videos for us as a community. So what I thought was that once we reach 1,000, I reach 1,000 subscribers, which will happen at some point, I think, probably early next year, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, for everybody that has contributed a video RPG-wise, which is going to be the key, I'm going to put your names in a hat and draw it live on my show. And the winner of that will get a brand new, unopened copy of the Silver Anniversary Dungeons and Dragons box set, which is worth about $200 at least. 100 quid UK money at least. Unopened. Not The seal has not been removed. So that is my um, that is my commitment to you. So if you want to be part of that draw, you need to give something back to the community. For those already been producing videos, I will be putting your name in a hat. I will send it to you free of charge. And that is my commitment to you as my YouTube channel. Please encourage people that you know on your channels to join. Try to encourage them to do videos. We would love to have and always welcome more of them. The more we get, the better the community is and the stronger it will grow and survive. And um, I look forward to seeing some feedback and comments even about that. So let's talk about some of the questions that you guys have asked me over the last few months. One of the questions um, that comes out quite a lot in the questions that I get asked. I do get a lot of emails. I, I'm sorry I don't reply to them. I generally absorb them and then try to use them on the game show. And I apologise, I've been out, out of the loop, but I've honestly been getting through a sizable amount of um, emails recently, as I'm sure you can appreciate. But one of the ones they ask a lot is about um, improving DMing techniques. And we've covered those off in our DMs tips programs, but specifically around um, experienced DMs who want high level tips. So we, we've been getting at those slowly and we're at them now. We're starting to cover them more and more. So tonight's programme I hopefully has touched on another way that you can challenge yourself to find out about your games. So I hope that answers many of those types of questions. The other thing that I want to touch on here is another question that I generally gets asked quite a lot to me is about how someone goes about getting an RPG game released to a bigger audience. It's a tough gig. Um, the, the thing I would say is this, is there have been a few people who want to submit those games to me and let me review them. Now, I've been very reluctant to review people's products on, on the YouTube format. Now, I'll quickly explain why. A number of people have sent through products, and I'm not going to say who they are because we've received so many. Some of them, I'll be honest, I would not review because if I reviewed them, I felt that I was going to give a lot of negative feedback as opposed to constructive. I was going to try and be constructive, obviously, but I didn't want to destroy someone's baby. You know, someone's put a lot of time and effort into something, and it's really difficult in a video format that no one else can see, because they're not, they're not seeing the rules that I'm seeing, for them to go out and actually have a look at it themselves, and also comment on those rules. So it, it becomes more tricky than I thought. So what I sort of thought about, um, when I looked at this question is twofold. How, do I, how am I going to explain to someone to get it? How are they going to get their product reviewed? And at the same time, how are we going to review them so it's fair to them? And how, how are we going to let the wider audience know about these great products when they come through? 
So it made me realise that I've got to do something a little bit more bolder as a channel, and this is what I'm going to do. So when products get sent to me from this point on that you want reviewed, I will only review the products I honestly believe could make it. That's, that's the strength of it. So I will review the products that I really believe can make it, and I will go in depth on those products, and I may go... I may do those products because they're different as a separate video. I haven't decided yet. It could be one that I take the random review off for one week and just slot some of this product in and run it. And then I'll explain at that point when we get the first good product through some of the techniques and tips you can use to get it possibly published. And if for whatever reason you don't manage to, then I'll back it because I believe in it that much. Now that you can't get much better than that in my view. And that's what I, my commitment is to those people who've asked that question quite a few times. So I hope that that answers the question for you, gives you a way to actually get your product out. And if I'm not answering you, but you still want feedback because you realise I've sent it to Sean, he hasn't reviewed it. I, I tell you now, if, if I haven't reviewed it within a couple of weeks of you sending it, then I'm not going to. So if you do want me to give you personal feedback, I will do that as, again, a commitment to anybody that sends anything through. Um, I'll do that from this point on. So if your product, you do want some feedback, and I haven't given it, there's probably a couple of reasons why, but if you still want the feedback, then I'll do it via uh, an email, and I will be honest around why I think certain things. Um, take that as you want, hopefully grow from it, use it, grow from it, and then when you're ready and you've worked on it, and you want, if you want it reviewed again, send it back through. Again, if it's good enough, it will get reviewed. So that's the way that we'll try to move things forward from this point. Now, some people have asked, are we, um, you know, um, are we still out there and doing stuff on Skype? I have, yes, I've been getting back more into Skype recently. My Skype name is Outsiders68, pretty easy to find. If you want to join or contact us, please do. You can always leave a message and I'll try and get uh, in touch with you as soon as I can. Um, I'll welcome any feedback or questions. It is a good way to talk and it's a great way to come off camera. And it would also be great at some point if any of you guys for your shows want to do um, some Skype stuff with me for your show or vice versa and you'd like me to interview you I, I would love to probe some of you dms as well because i think it'd be fantastic to do now this also talks about something else i've recently got back into and i need to cover that off in this show and um, touch on it one more time magic maxi uh he's a guy i've recently highlighted his videos a young guy lives near me um, he's got me back into magic gathering in a big way and um i'm definitely i'm thinking quite seriously about doing some separate videos away from my RPG stuff. And there's my timer, which means I'm down to the final couple of minutes. So time has caught up beautifully with us um, around Magic the Gathering. I've got back into it. I used to be, and still am, I believe, a brilliant deck builder. I'm one of those people, I love building ideas and stuff. And I've got excited about it again. And I, I feel that it's a good time period to get back into Magic the Gathering. I want to get back into it. Um, so I may do a separate little channel around that one product and go in depth a little bit more around it, building tips, advice, that sort of thing. And because I think there's some mileage in it and I think there might be another way to encourage different people into our community and to grow the community ever wider, um, I don't think we can just stay as one base. I think we have to expand out and continue to broaden our horizons. So that's why I mention it. Anyway, guys, this has been the first RPG show with me, your host, Sean Connors. This has been Outsiders. Till the next time, happy gaming. Take care of yourselves. Until then, bye-bye.